<laughs> Amazing. Good round. All right. What's your training? Uh, a lot of dudes. A lot of... We're still talking about uh, fighting, right? Oh, <laughs> train me, a lot of <laughs> um, uh, oh, train, I'm just trained. Okay, cool. We're, we're at the same level then. I too have been around a lot of guys. Your speed is incredible. As begins moves faster and faster. You start noticing he gets slower and slower. He, he's trying to keep up, but he's barely holding on, backing up more and more, slowly giving ground. As Cordy, you get a natural 20 versus Tyler's natural 1. Holy fuck, you are fast. <sighs> I haven't done it in a while. Past few times I've played Black Fuck, I was hurt. I get it, you, you start something and you're not satisfied with it, and then, then eventually it. Yeah. Sex joke. No, it's okay. Don't worry. I usually win the first two rounds and then get my ass handed to me. So don't worry. <laughs> I hope that's the case. <laughs> I don't. I want to win something for once. Oh, you're really good. You old man beat you. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> God, I'm getting tired. Can I Me too, home? please. <laughs> As uh, suddenly, Tariq with an 18, a ball of something comes from nowhere, hits you in the side of the face. However, with a 7 versus an 18, there is a single moment where Tordy can have the advantage on you, but you will have the advantage on Tordy for most of the fight. Oh. What the fuck was that? Uh, I'll hazard your environment. It's already interesting. Two to one. Okay. Had enough? That's a good idea. Final word, Cedric. Uh, right. Push Too slow. <laughs> ah, you son of a. <laughs> Congrats, you beat up a hobbit. <laughs> I'm doing it again, too, gladly. <laughs> Alright. Good fight. Hold on. Let me face the other one. There we go. We should. We should fight other people together. Yeah. For sure. I agree. It'd be really good. Ready? What? Okay. <laughs> that was a yes. I can tell. As you continue to try to cross blades with Tori again, 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 they're so fast. Their movements are like a flowing wave as you begin to try to combat them over and over. You have been trained by men of steel, but this. This person moves in such strange ways that you're not used to. And in a single moment, with a natural one versus a three, Tori will find an opening once more. 
Bad path. Oh, that felt good. Oh. Black fucked the shit out of you. You're right. She did. Your girlfriend whack fucked the shit out of me, Vesper. Is this what the group is? Is this what it is? Time to finish the job. No. Oh, fuck off. You're not going to let me do this. This is the first time I've ever played whack fuck. No. I did it anyway. <laughs> Son of a bitch. You know, right, you want to go? Let me get up. I need to reclaim my dignity. If I can't successfully whack fuck your girlfriend, I will successfully whack fuck you. you. Hold on. I feel like I cut out. Do you? Oh, okay, okay. It's time. It's time. Right. Three seasons leading up to this. <laughs> Ready? Ready. It's a lot more of a chore to take myself. Please begin to cross and move fast and quick, even she. It is heavy and it's cause of slowness towards you. Know? Fortunately, Tyler, with time, you'll be on the back foot once again, sadly, with a six versus an eight. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. <sighs> You've activated my boss music. No, let's fucking whack fuck each other, Jesus. <laughs> King's a menace. <laughs> Listen, I'm just trying to add some flair. Oh, you want flair, huh? of each other weighing as they crash over and over. With the lack of armor, you're moving faster, but the weight of the blades uneven to some are not used to it. Unfortunately, Kyler, you will be again on the back foot once more with a 10 versus 15. I knew this day would come. <sighs> you should have finished me when you had the chance, boy. Understood. Oh. All right. Please roll. <laughs> Fuck me. You didn't need to cross blades over and then over. Cause here you just the weight of the blade is throwing you off foot. The hits you took earlier from Torty have been making it almost impossible. And sadly again, with the back foot, the the sword will come down, knocking your blade low, and have an opening clear for your chest. 
<laughs> well fought. Likewise. <sighs> All right. Very impressive. Very impressive indeed. <laughs> <sighs> that was something. That told a girl. She did. Yeah. Oh, that's unfortunate. Do we lost? Uh, sure she got to see Do we tell the team we won? You know, big strong. This was all for nothing. <laughs> She's slow on the journey. It's okay. Well done. Oh god. Okay. okay, now you can do it. <laughs> With a real sword? Yeah, I'll get a I'll get a mistake. You wouldn't need a draw while he's down. <sighs> Not... Who's my friend? You wouldn't need a draw with a stick, would you? That I might do. Wait. I didn't hear you say fuck at all after all. Fuck. Since when did you have that? There we go. Oh, no. So... Oh no. Since before we showed up. That's how I got mine too. It, what? I just heard him go. Z -Z 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 -Z. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Sorry, since before we uh, showed up here. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> God. Yeah, you get there, big man. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Hold on. Well, I've been humbled. There's nothing else for me to do but take my own life. <laughs> if you have to, I'll tell Tizim what happened. I did. By a landslide. Good. No. You're back. Just in time for us to kill Shariq. No, he lost all three rounds. <laughs> I've been nice. fighting he today. One. Don't listen to Vezrin. I don't trust you over Vezrin a hundred times. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's only fair. <laughs> it's not that I'm really trustworthy, it's that you're really untrustworthy. Okay. Wait, no, that's worse. Exactly. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't say exactly. Oh, that no, hold on. Is that is that, no, is no, that no, a no. thing? Do you notice that like short? Things? No, no. I no? trust I trust Hermie like a bazillion times more than him. I I trust. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. So it's just a him thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. How much do you trust me? I don't understand why people don't trust me. I'm like, what the? Because you're snooping around me? and constantly asking questions. Yeah, it's all pretty the time suspicious. Every couple of months. Because I'm curious. Yeah. I'm, yeah you know what they say about curiosity. I do it. But you know okay. what? You shouldn't trust Tordy. She's up to something. Would you rather? Would you rather somebody fuck? be quietly you listening along with someone who asks questions, eyes. and then you know you're there? What? What? No, I can't. What do you mean? Glasses. That's that spark of intelligence. <laughs> it's deep, deep back there, but it's there. Uh, I think. Are they saying something? I can't really hear it. It's too far away. What, why are you all upset? Is it wrong? It's, it's, it's my no, big ass fears. They can pick Present. it up. <laughs> oh, you do can trust you? me. Oh, okay. But to be fair, it's not a What'd big part of jump. <laughs> that was Thanks highly time. audible. Oh my Thanks, God. Time. You, you want the, 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 the big man, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll let you use this. I want to beat on the big man. <coughs> no, no, it's okay. It's no, okay. Right. What, what do you mean, big man? Oh, you're big. Isn't everyone a big man compared to you? Are you saying I'm short? I, I don't see anyone big around here. Y'all are taller than me. Except for, wait, hold on. Are you taller than me? Stand yes, up. we've mentioned I before. I about this. I feel, feel cold out now. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I don't remember. Right. You might Everyone be taller. Everyone taller than Tori, therefore I am taller than Tori. 
Everyone important is taller than Torty. <laughs> Isn't it so tempting? You just want to like grab them and fucking like a like a, throwing a watermelon on the ground. You just want to fucking you know. Yeah. Oh God. I want to so bad. Always what? We always do apparently. Oh. Well, I guess you like people watching. Whatever floats your boat, right? Can we please stop talking? <sighs> No. Listen, didn't you enjoy wife fucking? We should definitely do it again sometime. I'm going to become evil because of it. <laughs> I hope you all realize. I'm becoming the Joker. <laughs> you keep going using that excuse. You can't use that for everything. <laughs> do you want to know how I got these scars, Tony? <laughs> Whack fucking. <laughs> Which ones? <laughs> Good Don't make me give you an intervention. <laughs> <laughs> Intervention with what? Vezrin, we're really worried about you. All your friends are here. And me, and Torty, and Tang, and Severick. You're Severed. going to wreck the collar of my shirt. What are you I doing? I am I'm in the Intervention. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, 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 you just... I was slowly lowering you down to a laying position. <laughs> oh, my leg! Quick, he's on the ground, get him! Yeah. <laughs> oh, my arm! Ow. My injured arm! Kill him. Kill him oh, now, Tank. You will never have a chance like this again! <laughs> I mean, uh, no, let him go. Get up. Oh, thanks. Shit, you're right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do it, Tang. End the magic plot. Oh. <laughs> magic plot still lives with the snail. Understood. Kill all the snails. Uh, by the way, I had a, a delicious escargot yesterday. Mm. It was, mm, oh. <laughs> no, don't kill me. I never had anything like it. It, 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 it practically made me tingle. <laughs> oh, no. You were tangling? Oh my god. Tangling. Are you trying to tangle, oh. Tang? Does no, Tang man. make you tingle? Do you get tingles from Tang? Actually, does he? Do you get Tang point. tingles? Do you get Tang yeah, tingles? Tingly tangs? I don't know. If you hit me, I've done nothing I, don't, I, feel like, I feel like I have checked once before and I don't remember. I'm just going to ask really quickly. <laughs> See <laughs> season three. Oh, hey Brunswick, do I get tingles from Tang? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's something I probably should have asked a long time ago. I feel like I did, didn't I? Who during season was? one? I don't remember. I feel like you definitely have. No, you, you asked season to be one. Fair, oh, did I? It's two. been like what four years? Hold on, holy shit! I think Chad actually knows. Um, actually, in season one, episode two, at the 15 minute mark, you can clearly see. Appar apparently, episode one, maybe. Oh, yeah, wow. you, you brought me into your scribery, episode one. <laughs> that was probably when you asked. Hey, same. I, like, I remember that. that. Oh, yeah, that's right. I heard about that. <laughs> yeah, you drew me naked. I still haven't seen a single episode of it. I swear, like one of purely professional. <laughs> yeah. Shh. Oh, there's someone going for it. Is that Garbon? <laughs> or is that there's another bald guy? No, that's Garbon. You know what? I uh, ask questions about things. Those are genuine questions. I genuinely have no idea what that. anything I don't means. Know what <laughs> How did you get approved? Uh, I kind of want to By the way, up on home. <laughs> because I read the law. With orange shoulder pads, riding as a messenger away from town, towards the north. The orange is, uh, it's robber baron colors. Oh. Oh. And? That means he had a messenger send something to Nautis, or bring something back oh. to Nautis, and go back to the north. Did you see the Royal Arrow Landing Guards, by, by the way? way? I saw them, I did not interact with them. They walked up to us, locally. and they were like, they look at me. They me. And they looked at a piece of paper and they're like, very good. And then they left. They did that to me too. Yeah, they looked at me and said, jack all. <laughs> oh, fuck. Hmm. Well, anyway. They, they just <sighs> looked at me, opened the paper, looked at me again, looked at the paper, shut the paper and walked off. Yeah, they did similarly to me. You know what? 
I just realized you and I should really have a, a talk like fu- about some things. Yeah, let's go talk. Let's go. No. Um, <laughs> let's go talk normal. Yes, talk normal. Okay, well, have fun, I guess. I'll get him back to you tonight. I mean, you can come if you want, Tordy. Oh, okay. Don't come in here, I look terrible. I'm so fucking sweaty right now. Oh, that, that wall looks a lot steeper when you're not climbing it. That's why I was so fucking amazed how you showed up there. Yeah. I don't know how I did it. I was just so panicked and, you know, naked and afraid. Huh. <laughs> I will take you, Sharif. <laughs> Quick question. Mm. Do you have a key to that warehouse? Is that where you keep your shit? N- no. Oh, is that actually? Wait, is that where you put the the things so I can tell to Zima? Is it in that warehouse? Wait, Tang, did you put Why are you the stuff at me in like that, that warehouse? <laughs> no, it's right there. <laughs> oh, is that easy? Oh, yeah. Yes, I don't know. All right. <laughs> Does Zim have a key it's... to that warehouse? <laughs> it's just outside. You alright? I was... That, that, I was told that was our warehouse. Wow, you have really deep bags under your eyes. Are you aware of that? Yes, I don't sleep I very often. I get some, like, cucumbers. You should do that more often, then. Alright, team. I invited Tang as well. Yeah, sure, invite everyone. It's, my house is a fucking hostel at this point. That that bucket is filled <laughs> I mean, with bloody the water, by the way. Ew. <laughs> what? <clears throat> it, what, is your piss not red? <laughs> is that just, I hope that's not a drow thing. Is that not normal? And that you just have... <laughs> oh, what? Oh, shut up. <clears throat> so what's up? Right, so about the robber baron. Um, I know that the general vicinity of his hideout now. Interesting. Um, I got in good with the Sawtooth Company. I wanted to know who their iron supplier was. They took me up north to go meet their iron supplier in the Trident farmlands, and along the way we were assailed. We had bags put over our head, we were drugged through the forest, straight to the robber baron's keep that he has out there. He's got an entire stronghold. I don't know if it's an old castle or ruin or what, but it's full of iron and raw materials and all sorts of things. Well, that narrows it down. You can't build something like that in secret. There'd be plans somewhere. Maps. And Trident right. farmlands of a pick territory. And it looked like an older... Uh, Right. We never made it there. People in our cart were killed except for us. The thing is, and this cannot leave this room, they were expecting us. The iron supplier is none other than the robber baron. <clears throat> yeah. The waylaying of the cart is a cover so that I am not um, endangered by having met with him. I don't remember you mentioning the others were killed. They were, yes, crossbowed. The Imperials are closing in on their, uh, territory now. I've been playing a fucking spy master, and, um, I've been talking with, um, the Imperials, I've been talking with, um, the Robber Baron, I've been with the group of the Sawtooth Company now, and, uh, A mem, well, we have business dealings with a mem at this point, but there's some, something fucking wrong at the keep. A mem and maybe Kovaz aren't getting their missives right. Uh, the Capitano says he pledges his loyalty to a mem, or at least that's what I hear, and then I hear that Kovaz is actually paying him. I think he might be taking money from both sides. Be right back. There was this whole disappearance 
Uh, sure. Keep talking. There was this whole, um... This merchant was murdered in Belano. Um, some well-to-do man who was trying to make it into a port town. The one that we went to investigate together. His throat was slit. The Imperials that investigated are very certain that it wasn't the Capitano and his men, and that it was the Robber Baron's men. But the Robber Baron only sent a small contingency to Belano, and it was easily beat back by the militia. Why didn't he send more of his forces? He has the manpower to do it. He has the money. He has everything. He's been selling the iron offshore to the pirates at um, Blackwater. He's been gearing up to try and take over from the Verdants to try and supplant them. He says it's because they have squandered their position that he wants to instill order again and that it has to be broken down before it can be built up. But I'm trying to find holes in that. Right now he's a bit of a hypocrite because he is killing merchants wantonly without regard. He says he only kills the ones that are setting business away and taking away resources. But I can't be sure. There's a lot more. Do you have um, something to add with that? I've had a few things, primarily about the guards here in Nautis. A man feigns ignorance about this whole guards being under the control of him kind of thing. Which is strange because they are, you know, basically his, right? The guards in this town. The Baroness refuses to intervene, and it, from an, what I've been told, looks like he's purposefully trying to make the town look bad. The guards, primarily. So he's basically sabotaging his own town. A man's trying to make the town look bad? Mm-hmm. Why? I would assume so that he can get the uh, support of the Imperials. It doesn't make any sense, because the Imperials will just take over. Yeah. And essentially, if he doesn't have any way to stand on his but own... if he was the one um, to open the door for them, then he would have a good seat. Perhaps. But he'd be nothing more than a puppet. <clears throat> um, I was speaking Maybe with the Major at the that. Embassy. Maybe. Uh, the Major at the Embassy, um, I told him some of, of this stuff. I've been keeping in close contact with him. Trying to sandwich them between us and the robber baron to keep, well, you know, war from happening in the streets. They are the... we have... Hmm. The Imperial Embassy is poised to pull out because of some posturing I've done um, with... a mem not telling them everything, and I've been able to gain enough trust that I had them investigate Belana on their own. And they came back with the same results. A man did destroy that town, at least, mostly. Mm. Um, the thing is, when I was attacked last night, the robber baron, not the robber baron, uh, Baron and Mem's men were the ones that did it. They said Baron and Mem had a message for me, and they proceeded to make me into a pincushion. The thing is, why would he be so bold? As to attack a merchant of the <clears throat> Merchant's Guild out in the streets mm -hmm. for little reason, uh, out of any sort of apparent necessity, it just makes him look bad. So one thing is the um, <clears throat> the elves were really fast to save you, like really, yeah. really fast, and then they also had signed paperwork ready to get you. They did. By yeah. who? Who was it signed by? Uh, the, the Kovas? Kovas when you were in the, um, the clinic, they, they refused to let, you, to let them in, and they're like, we have paperwork that they signed. They didn't tell me that. What they said is that Kovas saw the royal guard moving and asked them to discreetly follow. So they wouldn't have any paperwork ready to abduct me. Unless they so, got paperwork made and signed within the time that you were in the clinic. That seems like a really short amount of time to get paperwork. Why did the elves need you? Does. 
I... During a meeting I was having with a mem, uh, his brother barged in with the elven emissary. We locked eyes. Uh, it's clear he knows what I am, uh, what this is, or at least not what this is, but that I have some sort of capability, because he has it too. I suspect I am what Faye calls a, um, uh, what do they call it? Conduit. Mm, not, not just that. It's like inherent, um, birthright. native, um, birthright, Caster. It's beyond me. I don't need a dryad or uh, anything to siphon from my markings. I can do it myself. So, anyway, the first time I saw him, I knew immediately. He was like me, and he turned around, made eye contact. So, after he saw me treating with a mem, he came to my shop to ask me why. I told him I was trying to make sure that a tyrant didn't get power, and he scoffed. That I could, um, succeed where he and Kovas had failed. But I left myself open to the door with him, that I'd be willing to work with him if he provided some sort of alternatives. I wonder if this is this alternative. I think he wants to get me on his side for some reason. He, earlier today, told me I shouldn't talk to anyone close to the Baron M.M. because it would be dangerous, with all things considered. So naturally, first thing I went and did is I went and talked to the Major Tobman, the Embassy. I went in a disguise, and I got in through the Sergeant, and, um... I had a meeting, and lo and behold, who was there but the captain of the elven guard that were with the emissary. Apparently, and it's not a secret he was keeping, but he is in open talks with the elven emissary, this uh, Major Tobman. I did say he was going to. I see. Well, luckily I got in and out without um, my identity being spilled. But that's provided that the Major and the Elven Emissary aren't somehow in this together. But I doubt it. Because <clears throat> uh, there were some things I told him about the Emissary that shocked him. And then there are some things he wants me to find out. We have five days to find out information on... Arilani soldiers, well, I, that's my task, is to find information on Arilani soldiers, and in exchange he's going to find, um, keep an ear for information on who wants me dead, specifically. But what we have five days to do is find out if a mem is being framed, find evidence, find the truth, otherwise he sends a missive back to the Empire. It will likely end with the embassy being vacated. Which in the long term thing? is good for us. Yeah, exactly. No. But if he's gone, there are only 16 elves in that keep and a handful of guards. Half of the army that the robber baron has out of there are loyal and fierce soldiers that used to be here. He that... could easily take it over. Okay, but is that worse than the Empire? It could be. The robber baron, he has all the trappings of a ruthless man. His words are like honey, but... I know not to trust that anymore. Well, it wouldn't be too so, we either have hard to... for more elves to show up. Perhaps. The other thing is, I've been getting visions or hearing voices... Um, it's always an elven, and I wonder if it's the emissary or maybe whoever the emissary reports to, but here, I wrote these down. Let's see. Where is it? 
This one I had this morning. It, they said I have entrusted everything here to you for a reason. It must be handled with care. If you do not ensure that this is a, su a success, when they send their emissaries from the capital, when they send those to see what progress we made, and it turns out you failed me, failed them, failed Elysium, you will be the one hung out to dry, not me. Do you mind, uh, oh. So, uh, one second while I pick the other one up. And this one from your last night. And so we continue as planned. It does not matter what sort of breakdown in security there has been. It does not matter what has taken place up to this point. Fix the problem. We serve an important purpose here. This entire settlement does. Get the savages in order and do it now. This was after I was attacked in my shop when I was up at the keep. I don't really know what to make of it. It's all very vague. But my sneaking suspicion is that it has to do with why the elves are here. Considering he has the same thing as I do, maybe we're somehow, I don't know, resonating or something. Oh. Hello, Vanilla. No? Come on in. <sighs> I did have another one while I was asleep, but... Elvin doesn't speak... Uh, Tori doesn't speak Elvin. Mm -mm. Oh, you know? Lots of Elvish you. words. Oh. Um, Where's Lisa? She's at the apothecary right now. I don't remember how any of them sounded, do you? Lot of liya sounds. I see. All right. Not any help. Yeah, oh, no, I down. can't even. Yep. <laughs> oh, to be fair, half, half of it was ago. also muttered, so I couldn't tell what was actual words and just mutters and then words again and stuff. So. I see. Yeah. See, there she is right there. All right then. Well, um, other than that, the Baron, the robber Baron, has said that he doesn't want to bring any fighting into the city. That he would just take over the keep. He would even allow the Mems to leave peacefully if they resigned. That he's mm, been in peace be talks good. with them. But again, he's willing to do a lot to get there, including murdering merchants. And cold blood. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Never mind. <sighs> so, we need to play this strategically. Either the embassy needs to come under threat. That's another thing. I asked the robber baron if I could get him the embassy. None of this leaves this room. I trust all of you implicitly. In order to make sure that we weren't executed, I wanted to make it seem like I was willing to be on his side. That I was a greedy merchant. That I was, um... Local and all that. Uh, I told him, if I could get you the embassy, would you consider me as the replacement to Sawtooth once you kick them out? And he said... He stood up, thought really deeply about it, and gave me an earnest, um, reply that he would think about it. And, um, to that effect, that's the current angle I have with the robber baron now. That means he's looking into you. You're right. If he has no <laughs> anywhere, he's gonna know that you're playing all sides. Apparently Sawtooth is not on good terms with him anyway. I did tell him that I've been treating with him and the Imperials, and that, um, essentially I'd be willing to double-cross them for him. Well, that's a good so, cover. What if... What if he's right. worried that you have that same agreement with them? Mm -hmm. The thing is, the Imperials can't get me what he thinks that I want. He can. Hmm.
So. Shinny! Hello, Shinny. So, now my question is, because I don't know how all these politics and stuff work. Um, all of those, the three Baron dudes are all fighting and all that stuff. What happens if the Baroness does exile her two sons? What happens then? Maybe she'll finally snap out of it. She's been threatening or, um, it recently quite a bit. So I had. Even Major Topman told me as much. So worst when? case scenarios, what happens if she does kick them out? You know what? I just had a thought. Hmm? The robber well, baron's men... Working? Uh, I've got them sent out, um, if that's what you're asking about. No, I'm talking about I've been sending letters to the Baroness this whole time with flowers. Trying to... <sighs> Basically, Easy get grief. on your side. Mm. Because I know what it's like to lose a husband. So I've been conversating with her. Uh, through Has letters, she been responding? Some unique flowers. Mm. Not as of yet. Both of them were taken well, up to the keep. We already know that the missives I, uh... have been being controlled that are going up to the keep by someone. Right. I had a thought just now. Uh, this might be... This might be it. The robber baron's men, most of them, are natives to Nautis. Soldiers. What if they still have some loyal men in the Nautis Guard? Undoubtedly. What if the robber baron is the one that's playing the brothers against each other so violently? He was highly respected. What if he's the one that has sway and control enough to send royal <laughs> guards with the pretext that a mem was the one to kill you? But then why would the elves get involved? That's too elaborate. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but still, it, all that other stuff could be true. He could be the one intercepting all the missives. It is entirely possible. Highs and ears within the walls. He would need to. In fact, I'm I'm sure he does. Is whether or not these are the ones that intercepting these missives he or does. not. He has to. Otherwise, he has he will be going in blind if he does choose to attack. There has to be some sort of scouting group here, or some informant. And I just it saw is. one of them leaving. Several. Do you know any, specifically? One of them offered me a job. Yes? Where do you think I've been getting all of the stone? Do you have names, faces? No. They haven't said any names. I still see faces, but that's about it. If you can get names, please. Uh. Well, I could always leverage the force and ask them if there's any specific thing you've been wanting to know of what's maybe... Because the only force that's close enough to see the roads is the one, the road going towards uh, that coastal town we all go to, Casita. Yeah, right. I should, wait, I, I could ask... I um, want to fix your back. I could talk to you know oh. who. Mm, yeah, that's true. I could ask him about mm -hmm. movements of those with orange. You're throwing it back. <laughs> it's a great idea. Because they have eyes and ears everywhere, and they're never noticed because it's... Right. It's the wilderness, it's trees, I mean... It's... We have our own spy network I right underneath us. If we're not you motherfucker, I am your spy network! <sighs> <laughs> that's a good idea. Oh... I did want to mention, even though it was a short glimpse, before I saw Zeph, my friend, that guardian appeared once more in the distance. He walked all, he was watching me, and then he walked away, and when Lisa went out there to look for the tracks, she saw only a couple of deep tree tracks, and then it went it was gone like he instantly vanished i didn't know 
A guardian like Who's that Lisa? can vanish. My sister. Oh. Okay, One of cool. my sisters, anyways. Anyways, she um, usually is out there in the woods when I need her. But... Uh, he's... <laughs> And this guardian's different. He actually has carved runes on his body. Druidic in nature, definitely for sure. He's different. He's not mine. He's not the one that they encountered. Not Haskell and... Tree he didn't encounter long ago. Oh, God. What? Oh. Hi, welcome to the party. Living in my fucking oh. house now. Oh, welcome to the, the show. Who owns the house? So weird to see you here. Yes, <laughs> Vince and I fucking live here. How odd. Hello. You know, I, was, I was. I was expecting you to walk in at any point. I've got a lot of um. <sighs> I do. Stuff I've been trying to do. <laughs> well, give me a second to get cleaned up, and I'll come downstairs. I don't believe uh, you. Sure. I was actually about to head out to try to try something. Um, how long is he? He's just been here eating carrots. Oh, yeah. I see. He's stressy. <laughs> leave him alone. Oh, okay. It was crackers the other night. <laughs> no. Well, then, if you don't need me, never mind. You can carry on with your evening, Mr. Morgul. Uh, well, I just, I feel bad. I was trying to do a thing earlier, and now right. it's become later, and all this stuff. But, so let's um, expand on this plot to sink Nardis. Right, so I'm going to put bombs all over Nardis. No, um... Oh, no, not that free. I'm sure that oh Shri can fill you in on what that. I've told him. I, um, there was a lot oh, yeah. there. But like, I need... Fuck. That was a lot. The, the key takeaways, I think, are... Robert Baron has informants all over the place, probably, is controlling all of the missives we just determined, and uh, because he's got loyalists uh, with him, people that know the ins and outs of the, the guard, who would know the other people in the guard, probably have friends that are still in the guard. Um, he's probably why the bear, they, he's probably the source between why the brothers are so at each other's throats that the mother's even having to step in. He's setting this place up to fail so that he can swoop in and take the reins and become the new Baron. Um, you say this with such certainty. Are you sure? I spoke to the man. How many times have we dealt with people of power that have given their true intentions? I mean, what else would he want to do at this point with how entrenched he is? I had a thought. And humor me. Perhaps it's stupid, maybe not, but I want to say it, so at least everyone has a puzzle piece. Let's think for one moment, let's assume the robber baron has no loyalties to this province and does not care about the outcome. Mm. Let's assume that all they are is a driving force to weaken the province or destroy it, and they do not care if it survives his actions. Who would benefit from that? Who would benefit if the current province was toppled? The other province that borders it? Right, uh, the Pax would. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the other dynasties. It's entirely possible. Mm -hmm. And maybe they would even try to install the robber baron and uh, maybe legitimize him, however it may be. But we'll think a little further than that. Let's assume the dynasties aren't involved. The nearby ones. Mm. This is a port in a channel. If the current family was overthrown, it is entirely possible that perhaps another faction might move in if the way was cleared for an agent that they were paying. Let's assume that the robber baron is on somebody's payroll. If they toppled mm. the dynasty here, removed the family in totality, with no intention of installing themselves, who would benefit most from controlling the mouth of the channel into Gravia? Uh, perhaps the pirates from across the channel? It's entirely possible. 
That also would mean that they would control both sides of the channel, because Blackrock isn't that far from the channel itself. It's only a few miles from us. It's on the other side of those redwoods or whatever. Hmm. Maybe. It is just a question that has been in my head, just trying to see things from all angles. Who else would benefit from this family toppling? Hmm. It's also no secret. Uh... The entirety of Grady is based off of coin and mercantile uh, advent advantages, being able to pull the wool over the opponent's eyes and outbuy, outsell their entire existence. It's not unheard of. The entire council are merchant lords. They're coin lords. Mm. Is it possible that some of the merchants mm. here might be involved? Perhaps they want to make another... Uh, burger town. Or it is ruled by a council of merchants. Do they do that in Zeneca? If you recall, there's a family there that's so large when the late Baron died, I don't remember the name. The nine or so children he had formed a council. The eldest ruling. Mm. They split everything between each other. I think they allow the eldest to, air quotes, rule. Is it possible that the Merchant's Guild here is looking to establish something like that? The reason why I ask is yes, the province has fallen into disarray and has been destroyed by neglect. Mm. But the other rich here have allowed it to happen. The Merchant's Guild is filthy fucking rich. Would they not be interested in their own safety? Why would they be moving so many goods in and out of a province that can't protect itself, that's walls are practically destroyed, and what, not pressure the family to take care of it? Not even pressure. Forget about doing the right thing. Not even loan them to put them in debt to themselves to influence the family or try to make them address their own interests. They don't even take advantage of the situation. They're just willing to sit there and let nothing happen. Which is strange to me. Because what we saw in Ireland is people who had money would go out of their way to throw it around and change things in their favor as much as they wanted. I expected that in Gravi a lot more than I've seen here in Nottis. True. I would be uneasy with a warehouse full of goods if I knew the city could be raided because there's no bloody walls. Why are they so comfortable? It may be nothing. Maybe they're complacent and they're not really worried about anything like that. Or perhaps they think they can pull out before anything bad happens. But it just, it's one of those itches at the back of my mind. I am unsure. <sighs> Could potentially try to investigate the merchant skill. Such an obtuse organization, though. I'm not sure how to get past the. Uh, uh, <laughs> they love the bureaucracy. Oh. What? Sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> uh, in terms of thoughts, um, I was upset that you could squat and I can't. Everyone else can fucking squat. I can't. Sorry, I meant <laughs> not to have it the brain thoughts. Um,. <laughs> Go back to the <laughs> What are you saying, Vizrin? <laughs> um, I was saying... Uh, we were saying Can about the thought? obtuseness of the merchant's guild. <laughs> well, you fixed her brain damage. <laughs> the merchant's guild's obtuse, I don't even know where to begin with that. Well, that's what I'm saying. You're There's so much bureaucracy. There's so much bureaucracy and red tape, what's the reason for it? It's not efficient. Let me put it this way. When a government does that, when a noble family does that, or a lord, and they go out of the way to make so many bloody regulations because they're trying to hide something, 
They're trying to cover loopholes that they use to make sure that nobody else uses the same thing they did to get into the position they did. Now it could just be a merchant thing. Most merchants are thieves anyway. No offense. <laughs> Some offense. All right, go on with the whole <laughs> what you're saying. Well, the point is, they might not be as innocent as we think. Perhaps they have some backdoor dealings. I, um, I still don't understand that you were sent to meet with a particular supplier, and you never met them. But instead, the robber baron intercepted them, killed everyone on the cards except you and Markle, and then brought you in. But then he said that he was the supplier. But you... Are you sure? I highly doubt that's the case. Just about every single one of the Robert Baron's men that I have talked to have complained about Sawtooth Company inside of Cassetto. But see, that's the other thing. We learned from a mem and the Major, you even said this, that the only wagons not being hit are Sawtooth. Right. But then the Robert Baron said that he's only hitting what? Um, non-local wagons? Right, um, wagons that are taking supplies away from Nottis, trying to drain the country of its wealth. So then why is Sawtooth not getting hit? Because he's their supplier. He's the... He's using them to sell to the pirates across the coast. Right? That's... What he told me? You had... You said that you never met the supplier. You were intercepted. Is that not the case? Did I miss that's the That's the cover story for what I'm assuming is what happened. Uh, why would he be expect he was ex his men were expecting us. So clearly Does he have an inside man? You yourself said that you think the robber baron has eyes all over Nodders. I don't know why you feel like that, but if that's the case, why is it so weird to believe when it comes to the other conversation you had? Shit. We literally heard that there was a night raid, what was it, four days ago now? There was fighting in Cassetto, there was fighting in Balerno, and there was fighting at the Cross Keys Inn. Every single major area around us. What were they doing in Cassero? Apparently they had men there. One of Sawtooth's wagons were hit a little while ago. Uh, that was one of the bodyguard missions. I don't know who the guys were working for because they, they you know, killed all the, the dudes that were robbing us except for like one guy. But like, I don't know who they were working for. What did they wear? Orange? Mm, did, did they? Uh, no, I no, I don't think so. Mm. But they were all held up at this keep. Then. Maybe. It's possible. Then why would they brag about they don't? We don't know who we pissed off. Bully mercenaries hired by s rivals or something? Some people died. Well, unfortunate. Oh no. It's possible. No. Oh. Mm. Mm. We'll I be back. Revenge. No, it's okay. <laughs> oh god, I would not touch <laughs> that. I would not touch that what? bottle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching the screen and I saw him pick it up to be so wacky with it. Oh no. <laughs> so, you are so dead, Lyra. Anyway, <laughs> to recap. 
Apparently there's more than one mercenary group that's out there inside of the woods. Or at least somebody that's trying to run the game. There's well, plenty. The Baron, the the robber game. Baron, is attempting to control things around oh, to yeah. wreak and take notice. From what I know, it might just be rumors amongst their men. They were talking about doing... Well, they were complaining about the Sawtooth Company being in Cassetto. It's, per, it's possible that they may have sent their forces there to try to say, this, this city is not yours, move out. And that might be why their ship is now docked inside of Nottis. Well, the ship's docked inside of Nottis because we outed the last shipping company. And they finally uh, are moving in. So this uh, deal we had um, going... Who do the Sordillos work for? The Sordillo mercenary company. Sordillo? Currently, no one, but who knows how long that will last. Kovaz is wanting to hire them a while back. <sighs> mm, I think he still is. Mm. Somebody's also trying to kill Kovaz. Who's trying to kill Kovaz? I don't know. I heard whispers about some kind of assassination plot for Kovaz. That seems kind of important. I don't know if it's them planning it, or somebody that they know of that's planning it. All I know is that somebody wants Kovaz dead, and they were planning on doing it at some time soon. Who told you that? I brought it up with a few people. Did they not tell anyone? Probably not. I didn't hear about it. Well, I brought it up with Morden. Well... <sighs> I've been going into that quarry for the past few days, trying to fish out some information on what actually is going on behind the scenes. Because I, I figured, if it is the Robber Baron's men controlling both the Iron and the Stone Quarry, they might be gossiping. Oh god! Close. <laughs> so anyways, that's about all the information that I was able to get from that. Well, if you want to know then, anything more, you could always ask Jensen or Sir Extra about the Sardetto Company since they work for him. It's a good idea. I'll ask Jensen about it. Um, right, back to what we were saying. I had assumed that the Sawtooth Company had used that whole ruse about an iron supplier being in the north of the Trident farmlands uh, as a ruse to get me to meet the robber baron. Because that's... Because I, I had asked for a meeting with the robber baron or the iron supplier or... It was... So did they send the other people to get shot then, or...? I think they were just unfortunate bystanders in the whole thing. Mm. Something about all this just doesn't fucking smell right. I can't put my finger on it. There's definitely something at play. Either someone that you've spoken to is lying to us, or there's another faction, or someone pulling the strings of a faction, or um, something. I have another idea, Vision. Hmm. You said you don't know where the Rob Baron is, right? I um, generally know where he is. Yes. Okay. Well, I could always, if you could take me to that location, I can ask the force to pinpoint where their hideout is. That would help He's you. got a lot of scouts, and the, the place is heavily trapped. trapped. And they, they've got primitive traps out there. Apparently the Imperials, they're zeroing in on his location, and they are um, encountering these traps and crossbow ambushes. It wouldn't be My safe. It's practically a war zone. Is if he gets cornered, if this crack theory is correct, that's... If he does have a benefactor, they might accelerate what they plan to do. If it looks the like weird the thing is, he told me that he didn't care if he was attacked by the Imperials, because then it would make him a martyr. A martyr for what? Exactly. He thinks the common people will rally behind him or something, but... Maybe he told me that to bait the Imperials. It 
he's baiting the Imperials out, and maybe he's working, working with the Merchant's Guild or something, and then... But how would they convince all of those men to desert their homes, their people? They'd have to rally thought. behind something. I'm not sure how to word this. I had wondered why the Imperial ships were here. I thought it was a show of force or something of the sort. But they never did anything. And they don't, wouldn't need a show of force because a mem's already in bed with them. Mm. So they must have had another purpose, another use. If you're, what you're saying is correct, and they're trying to find where he is, it's entirely possible that... Oh, fuck, they would have just saturated the area or something before... Try to flush him out. Hmm. But if that's yeah, not the case anymore... Because each one of those the ships, ships held, again? held a lot of men. Yeah, they had a lot of men on each one of those ships. A what lot. was the catalyst to those ships leaving? Uh, Kovaz wrote to the council, and, um... Apparently they ordered that the ships be removed. Why? What is the purpose of that? Not that I'm upset about it, but what's the reasoning? I was... I believe it was, um... Because the Imperials being there in such force was, um... I suppose not appropriate for the region or something. Some sort of diplomatic incident they were worried about, I don't know. Something that I've always disliked about Grodian nobility is that the way they do things is very decentralized. From my understanding, as long as there is a time of peace for the nation, the different dynasties can make war with each other. So if the Vapex wanted to take Redard land, they wouldn't need it to be okayed by the council. They could just wage war. So it doesn't make sense to me that the council will get involved in something so minute. If the excuse is it has to do with an external force, I don't understand Grodian politics as well as I'd like. I would assume that would fall mm. under the autonomy of the state. I heard that um, Kovas, he, he likes to boast that he's got the law on his side and the council on his side, but apparently it's one council <clears throat> is on his side. Has taken some sort of that? special interest from the Elven emissary when he rescued me. If it's just one, it must be a really powerful one. It might be a benefactor. The one pulling the strings, maybe? Think, just hear me out. For whatever reason. Kovaz is working with the robber baron. For whatever reason. He's shielding them from the Imperials. Allowing them to continue to destabilize a region in which he is already popular. He looks good and them looks bad. Things come to a head. The people make their choice. They'd want to eat somebody, metaphorically. A man tries to deal with things by bringing in the Imperials and maybe some warships as a show of force to the Robber Baron, or perhaps look to destroy them. Kovaz blocks this, goes to his benefactor or somebody in the Council with a special interest, and the warships get removed. Now a man has been undercut and can no longer control the situation. The robber baron is able to continue operation, and this benefactor is able to keep other external factors off of what's happening in the province. I'm not saying but that's why fact, would... but it's a thought. The missing link is why would the robber baron and Kovaz be working together? How would they be working together? <sighs> Perhaps there is a promise of some sort of installment or position. Perhaps if Kovas takes the throne, he'll allow the robber baron to come back. We don't know what their true ideals are. I doubt mm. they tell us the truth. 
What if this is already Castillan? Has... Maybe he'll be Castillan again, or something better, whatever it is. But my question is, what would the best interest be of this council member? Do they have ties to a smaller family? Do they want to establish someone from their family here? Is it a land grab? Are they acting on someone else's behalf? There's a thousand more questions. Maybe this is what I was hearing. Um, I've been starting to hear strange things. Um, I can repeat it again, but it's a mouthful. He's been yeah. hearing voices. Hearing voices. Well, that's nothing new with Oh, which ones? Oh, okay. That's that is new. When he, well, when he, when he, uh, uh, he and talked he's to dead. me. He talked to Sorry. me earlier, Tazim, um, about what he's about to talk about. Um, it seems. Can't get a drink. Keep talking to me. It seems. His special markings are doing some strange things to his body, where it's almost like when I get those whispers from the woods, how the woods talk to me, it can be sometimes things of the present, or it could be voices of past, people who have been in that area, things that have happened in the what past, the and that's what it sounds like. What are you talking about? That's what it Since sounds like. Since when did Vezra do something like that? I don't know, it just now started happening. That's what is peculiar to him. He's hearing the markings he said started agitating him, and then he started hearing voices, almost like it's an echo of the past or... I thought he was saying that voices. it was not... I didn't hear anything about it being the past. I heard it as so, it something from Elysium. Such. I don't know what Elysium well, is. Where's that? What? <sighs> That yeah. Yeah. So Again? first, first off, first off, it was all spoken in perfect Elven. Then he, 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 the way he described it to me was that they needed that this elf that was speaking Elven, and he can he'll probably put it in more detail. But basically, saying that we need to get these savages under control. So the plan can move forward or something of that note. And then the second half that he got was something about someone from the Elven uh, from Ishma talking about Elysium. Someone from Elysium wants something to happen or something to get done. He can do it more, more descriptive when he gets back. But as so I told him I would try and find out more about it because, yes, in my books that I've researched, Elysium was something that is a long gone nation of sorts, and now he's back. So now he can explain I don't better. Don't like that. Oh shit! You're not visible. No. He's oh. getting water. He's getting water. He's there. He is. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Vezrin. I was only. Remembering um, vaguely what you had told me. It right. Was more like an echo. I'll just repeat it. I'll just do it as quick as I can. Mm -hmm. uh, what I heard this morning is I have entrusted everything to he everything here to you for a reason. It must be handled with care. If you do not ensure that this is a success, when they send their emissaries from the capital, when they send those to see what progress we made, it turns out you failed me, failed them, failed Elysium. You'll be the one hanging, hung up to dry, not me. And then last night I heard um, something similar. Um, but so it said, and so we will continue as planned. It does not matter what sort of breakdown in security there has been. It does not matter what has been taking place up to this point. Fix the problem. We serve an important purpose here. This entire settlement does. Get the savages in order. So I don't know what exactly to make of it, but I do know. Start our previous dealings with uh, 
the ancient one. Um, mm. If it's anything like his uncanny ability to know when people are talking about him, it's got to have a radius, which means I can't just be getting this out of nowhere. Either it's something that's happening now, or maybe it's an echo from the past, but it's got to be about this area. What if it's to the elves in the keep? No. I was wondering. What, what, one of them this one? is magical uh, in nature, so, mm, so maybe it's some sort of connection him. with him. What's really peculiar is that they're wanting this province so bad to help this province, and yet they never lift a finger to help Arlen when we needed them. Not once. I think that's I just because that. this province benefits them. Arlen did not. You see, we say that. But remember, Morden brought news that when everything fell apart in the last few weeks that there were groups of heavily in. armed elves being seen moving into Ireland. Mm. Did he ever tell you this? Wait a minute. I remember. Do you think they're doing here on a smaller scale what happened in Ireland? You, you don't think that the elves helped Ireland collapse and then swooped in? He certainly didn't stop it. And remember they were at that uh, archway that one time. Maybe it's that they I didn't care about Arrowland, but it more so about what was under it. Or something else. That I don't understand my greatest frustration when I was still back east was that the elves did nothing. They watched. They watched as their brethren were destroyed. They watched as the dwarves were destroyed. They never sent any aid, never joined our armies, nothing. They were silent. And then you fast forward to when we met. And when Ireland was in its death throes, you remember we even heard at Sledford that the king, before Gavers, was sending emissaries south. And the very last yeah. one that we heard of came back from Maryland without a head. Which is not elvish behavior, as far as I know. They have never been involved in at least my lifetime. In anything that you would think that they should be. They allowed the East to collapse. They allowed... Genuine human allies be destroyed. And now, with Astagon having fallen, the southernmost of the Trinity of Liberty, the Empire for the last two decades has shared a border with Eshmethalos. And they've done nothing. What are the deals you scared of then? I don't know if it's fear. Why would it be fair if they destroyed two other factions that were similar to the enemies they have here? Even if they didn't well, care about Erland, they could have used it as a buffer state. If they kept Erland alive, that means that the Empire would have stayed farther away, but they never did. They were content to let it all burn. Well, I know one thing. Whatever caused this extra great hair on my head is very powerful in Ishmethalos in protecting it. Very powerful. More powerful than Falgrith. I'm not sure how to more understand powerful. or measure that. From, well, you said you witnessed it firsthand, his power, his true power, when he tried to seal your arm. Yes. This that tried to get to mother, that tried to kill her, that caused this and almost killed me, was a presence I have never felt more stronger than Falgrith in my entire life. It was something a very caused old. that hair? No, it was trying to. When I'm a conduit for my mother, it was she was drawing magic through me like naturally, and it almost like went in reverse. Like it went through me to get to her and pull her. 
almost a killer. And it was big, came from Esma. Mass. Yes, it was a big hulking mass with from the vague veil I could see had bulky tree like arms and uh legs that they literally oh, had okay. roots that went into went to the ground like with an eighteen <sighs> as you recount this to them, you realize you're describing almost a more massive version of the initial guardian that you had spoken to. It, it strikes you. You think back to Elry, it is the very one and the same. The shadow fits, but it seems far more old, far more large. Wait a minute. If this is another guardian, another type. See, I thought, I got upset when I saw this vision. Because the guardian of Arlen told me he was the last of Etla's guardians that she created. The ones that came first before the dryads that she spun off herself. Why is this thing still alive and why didn't the guardian that I knew didn't know nothing about it? Or either... You, so you're saying there was a... a gnarled rooted thing and it tried to kill your mother it tried to kill me to get to mother but I told her though and I didn't I don't think it was doing it out of even though I felt malice come from it I don't think it was doing it intentional it was only protecting its border it was only attacking us because she leaped if I could say it metaphorically, her astral body, if I could put it into words, she was leaping magically from tree to tree to tree to get further into Ishma to find out what they were doing. And thus, all of a sudden, he, this hulking mass of a tree, made an appearance and shot roots underneath the ground coming towards her faster than she could, then she could flee. And by the time she snapped out of it, it nearly burned Lisa through her far away from the blast caused the gray hair on me go unconscious and I had the most clearer vision than my mother did of it looking like the guardian but it was massive almost as massive as that tree in Kagovia wait so it, it looks coming. it looks like this guardian the, the last guardian of Etla but it's much larger much more powerful mm. could it be more that that was Etla itself? Well, Etla's supposed to have been beautiful, from what I know from the stories. The dryads are like an image, like a mirror of herself, a reflection. And the one that took Mother away, I think was her and which was kind. This one was more of a male-type voice like the Guardian. And now the Guardians have been moving, like... Even Goldrick said the things of old are coming back to life once more and finding their kin, their children. I, I have to ask a question. Mm -hmm. A lot of this is, well, not a lot of it, all of this is fucking beyond me. But you keep referencing Goldrick. You have been in the last year quite a bit. But you're saying mm -hmm. things that I don't remember us getting as notes underneath Ledford. Is this new information? Yes. How? He, come, he, he comes visit me from time to time. I'm sorry, what? He still he exists. Come, he comes to visit me from time to time in the grove. I... He's never... Everybody thought that he was dead by his nose, but no, he's very much alive. It's not possible. The notes we found, correct me if I'm wrong, like three years ago were from, what, the, 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 the first, second era? That's thousands upon thousands and thousands of years. That's not possible. Yeah, but also his notes predate when, predate when he talks to me, when he conversates with me. Some of the things he said are things that are before... The east was destroyed before the eastern elves fell, before the eastern doors fell, about their having technologies such as 
that could go underwater and go with the Tritons. And how long have you been speaking to this individual? Uh, he started resurfacing after two I'm years not the only one and who maybe a month. That shit. Am I? A month. This whole no, conversation not. have happened. What? Yeah. Well, he Weird made his first appearance in. Some... Someone who is, uh, who has, we followed their breadcrumbs for almost a year of our lives. Finding well, I told them you in, back in, in all places. In Adwick, remember? Outside the lake in Adwick, I told you about Galdrick, that he came to our cabin. We had a conversation. Hey, well, I, th I thought you might have been a little crazy, Faye. I didn't really believe that's uh, a, a, a man from... A human man from the first fucking era was visiting your swamp shack. I'm, I'm sorry, that was hard okay. for me to believe. And, and now <sighs> they're visiting you now. Well, I tell you, the first meeting I had to him was very strange. When I looked at him, it wasn't like Falgrith, where it was oppressive. This was like I was looking at an endless horizon, like, I couldn't, it was almost like a dream, like if you were near death and you were seeing an endless beauty you couldn't describe. Something more old, something that was endless. And something that was familiar as family, in a way. He seems Is to... Is in the room with us now? <laughs> no. No, because he never fucking shows up when I need him. We spent so long looking for this individual. But I still, I still have this. I still though. remember him ranting about some order or she, some such. She puts out the wooden block and the other block that her mother had. These were different blocks he leaves around. One helps us point the way of different locations he's been to. Another one, if you hold it to your chest, it. I guess you feel his emotions of his past. And I've held the other wooden piece that he's had here before. And in the notes, he had mentioned, he talked about even about Tang and his metal mm -hmm. that he's made of. He even knows about Tang, the Warforges, when they first came into being. It seems like the metals that they I know were there's made a problem of. because right now you seem like the most rational man in the room. What does any of this mean to you? I want to hold that, that block. He's, that he's. <clears throat> I was going to say it looks like toys. Can I play with them? <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> They're very special. Okay. To me. Do you think there'd you be an adverse the... reaction? I. <sighs> don't know um you can i would say try and hold it with your other arm that's not in if i see some weird weird shit happen first I it's the one that out of your hand as soon as i okay can. okay okay this is the regular block that he was given that when they touched them together so touch them together is what she did so if you can put one to the next one <laughs> See if you feel anything or not. Rolling for two different things. <laughs> what I'm about to describe is going to happen simultaneously. And I will tell you when we are unpaused. <clears throat> okay. As you touch these two items together, you're suddenly flooded with emotion, Erendel. The feeling is definitely not your own. You can tell that it's not. It's definitely external, but it feels almost like you have thrown a cloak over yourself. Almost as if the feeling is impersonating you, but it is not quite yourself. You're seeing emotion from a third-party perspective. A strange thing, to be sure. You feel a very longing sadness. A very empty feeling. As if something very important was at the tip of your fingers. Something very important was on the tip of your tongue. But for the life of you, no matter what, 
You could not utter it, you could not say it, you could not find it. It is a feeling almost of love and knowledge lost. Something that was immensely important but could never be regained. It is, especially to you as a scholar, a horrendous feeling. It's not something that you like at all whatsoever. It's not painful, but it's something that you can identify with on a very intimidating scale. This is a known emotion to you. Whatever this person was feeling, or Galdrick, if it is him, must have lost something incredibly important, something that might have been able to fix or change or alter something. <clears throat> that was with your 14. With a 5, there is a sudden violent adverse reaction from along your arm. You'll start to feel a burning sensation coming from the edges of your fingers, and those of you watching will see the red lights somewhat coming out of the cuff of his right arm, but also seemingly trying to travel along the blocks. It'll stop along the corners, seemingly unable to interface with it, but that pain is going to rip through your shoulder. It's going to rip through your chest. It's going to be very brief, but very, very violent until you let go. And you are unpaused. Fast. Drop him. Okay, I didn't expect that. Are you okay? I'm all right. The blocks are they? Are they all right? Oh, you did? Okay. Now, Faye's gonna with a 13, pick them up. <laughs> one of the blocks look fine, and with a 9, one of them looks cracked. Not like it's going to fall apart, but a small stress fracture. The one being held in his right hand. Things that you've dealt with before by holding these phase exactly what you feel again. That has not changed. You know, it's so, like I said before. Baldrick. Can, can we all just agree? Um, if we see some weird stuff like that again, you're not holding it. I think I know why. I think that's made with wild magic. This is not. I think this is refined. Or soul magic. Or something. I don't think they're compatible. I think it's the same like I told you before. I think Galdrick and Falgrith are kind of the same, but not. Both of them have lost some. Both of them have lost something great to them in the past. I'm taking One, however, care of something in the kitchen. What do you mean, something in the past? Well, thinking about the emotions, there's one thing that Goldrick has always stated was, always let my emotions guide me, but also let my mind find the balance between the two. But always the emotion, the love, should always be your guide in accomplishing your goal. Whereas with Falgrith, his answers was different, especially outside the keep. That always stuck with me. And then I kind of felt for even a modicum of a second. We'll be up in a second, Kyle, if you'll wait. I'm about to head to bed. <clears throat> the same thing. When we can make a catch mistake, up tomorrow. It reflects poorly on them, but when we tomorrow make a mistake, first speaking of people who are on work, it kills thousands. And I think something in his past he did ended up killing a lot of people. And then that's when he is who he is now. A logical man that will not let anything stand in his way. Just